It's nice to hear that everybody is human. We're not alone. It just makes you, at the end of it, feel good. And then what? Hey guys, so those of you who have been following my channel know that something I'm really, you know, open and vulnerable about is my sobriety. For anyone who doesn't know my story, um, you can find more in the videos linked below. Also on my podcast, Pretty Messed Up, iHeart produces it. Um, I co-host with AJ McLean from the Backstreet Boys and Renee Elizondo. But here's basically a quick uh, cliff note version of my story. I got sober a few years ago, right after uh, my husband and I got engaged, and I just, you know, felt like that that was a huge turning point in my life and after losing my dad, which was very traumatic for me, he also had his own struggles with addiction and alcoholism, I realized that I just didn't want to fall down that same rabbit hole and instead I wanted to take steps towards changing my narrative and my story. However, I knew in order to accomplish this, I needed to stop drinking altogether. So that's what I did. I basically quit cold turkey. but. To say I've never looked back would be a lie. Promise to myself, but to all of you, deciding to be open, honest, and uncensored here on my channel is just non-negotiable. So here I go. I'm here to confess that lately, staying sober has been a little bit of a challenge for me. And recently, I've been thinking a lot, I have to admit, about drinking again. So I've decided to hold myself accountable by confessing my anxious feelings, to say the least, and to do so with all of you. So I've been sober now for almost three years. Wow, time flies. I also kind of did it, I guess you can say, when I decided to quit drinking in an unconventional way. Most alcoholics or addicts definitely check themselves into a rehab center or they will at least go into like a 12-step program. But for me, you know, I instead have decided and decided back then to just stick through therapy. So, you know, I have a therapist who I've worked closely with for the last decade and um, I still continuously see her like two to three times a week and I've never joined a 12-step program. I've thought about joining one, but I've never really took that step, I guess you can say, to wanting to join a program like that. It gives me anxiety because I'm naturally an introvert, which you guys can uh, find out here on my YouTube channel. I talk about me being introverted, but I also find it very overwhelming. But then I'm starting to like kind of reconsider. Maybe it's something that I need to do. Obviously, that is because there's something bothering me that I don't necessarily want to feel or face, and it's a trigger. You can be addicted to many things. I think the common denominator with addicts is us not wanting to face um, the reality of the situation or feel our feelings. So lately that has been a trigger. I think us being in Hawaii, you know, just that carefree like feeling of being under the sun. My husband like may have had a glass of champagne. My senses have come back even stronger ever since I decided to stop drinking. So like the smell of it, I missed. But then I just try and like fast forward my life. Let's say I do have one drink and I fast forward and it just ends up me falling into this rabbit hole of it's never just one drink, right? Once I've disrespected myself because I've you know, done a lot of work to learn to love myself, to love myself, to respect myself, um, it's like you just don't at that point, right? So it's like I have to start this journey over and over again and it's like it's just I guess a little bit discouraging. The main reason for me wanting to stop honestly was because I had an allergic reaction or I had some sort of reaction to alcohol. As soon as my father died, I was going to like my friend's baby shower or something and I remember taking a shot with my friends and all of a sudden like hives started to like appear and I started to become itchy and my skin was red. Like I was always very proud, um, I guess, that you know, that I never got red when I would drink or I never blacked out, you know, I was kind of like a functioning alcoholic, which is the scariest, I have to admit. Um, but all of a sudden I had such weird reactions to like the smell of alcohol. And I truly believe that it's something in my subconscious, right? Like, I'm not sure if I would have necessarily stopped drinking if I didn't react like I did that day. 
you could be addicted to anything, whether it be good for you or bad for you, but anything in excess, like if you're excessive, that's who I am, you're an addict. And it's important to be able to control your behaviors because it can addicted to running or addicted to diamond painting or addicted to booze or drugs. It's all the same, right? Like you have to be able to control your own behavior and your own reaction to things and really dig deep and figure out why am I doing stuff in, in excess, you know? And it's like, I'm just nervous that if I start drinking, that'll get me into other things that I may have never done before. When I have any feelings of doubt, betrayal, uncertainty, those for me are red flags, right? Those are like run for the hills and numb. Obviously, I know intellectually that living in the unknown, I have to surrender to that but it's a lot easier said than done. And my go-to is booze, is anything that numbs and gets me out of my head. It's just like there's so much chaos going on in my life right now that in the past, everyone always used to say, I don't know how you do it all, but I did it all because I was numbing through it all. And now for the first time through all the chaos, I'm actually having to feel it and to feel uncomfortable while feeling it. My podcast, Pretty Messed Up, has been like a safe zone, safe area for me to be vulnerable like I am here with you guys. And it has helped to hear other stories and to hear our guests that come on and that just open their hearts and their lives up to us. Um, and to hear Renee's soothing voice and to hear AJ's struggles, you know, his daily struggles, it does normalize everything. And I think uh, missing out for that week while I was in Hawaii, I know, very privileged um, and blessed, but it was like I was missing something, right? But what I'm scared of is that I'm going to be so codependent on this podcast. That just shows me, though, that I think I need to surround myself with more sober people. I think hearing other people's stories, like we recorded a podcast, um, one of our shows today, and it helped me so much to hear about one of our guests, Mark Malkin, who just recently came out with his story and his addiction to crystal meth and how he's been sober and how he, for the first time, was able just to talk freely about, you know, being diagnosed with HIV and all of that. And it's just like, it, it's super liberating and it's like, it just makes you, at the end of it, feel good. And then what? I think I need a program where I don't just depend on my therapist. I, I depend on other people who have been there with me as well. You know, it's always like that one little excuse. God, God forbid something tra traumatic happens to me um, in the near future. That is something I don't know, actually, if I would be able to tell you 100% that I won't be able to drink. And this is why AA, the AA programs um, out there they say one day at a time because to even think about that right now makes me want to drink so i have to literally take it one step at a time well i think in general i've been pretty much an open book right so i've written a book about my um, child abuse i've just been blessed to be able to um, talk about my life in such a vulnerable way um, and in a weird way it's like i could be more vulnerable here on this platform than sometimes i can be to friends and family and loved ones. It's um, it's different. It's like, I feel like I'm not being judged, right? Because it's not like my canon is gonna talk back to me. But like you guys, it does help and it's very encouraging to hear and see your guys' comments and how I feel like I, you guys are rooting for me. And I want you to know that the reason why I have decided to open my life up. When I hear other people's stories, it actually really helps me. I don't know, it, it just pushes me to be better, you know, and it's nice to hear that everybody is human. And I think that by telling my story, I know that, and I've heard from you guys that it has helped at least one other person. I think that's also what keeps me sober, is knowing that I'm actually telling my story because I know that I'm helping other people and I just know that you know you're not alone like we're not alone there are different levels of sobriety maybe there are different levels of betrayal there's different levels of feelings right but we're all human and we all have bad days and we all have amazing days that's just life
one day at a time. From the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank each and every single one of you who took the time to hear my struggle with alcoholism and addiction. This platform has helped me become so much more vulnerable and I realize it's because of all of your guys' support and helping me create a safe space throughout the years. So thank you, I will be forever grateful. I honestly feel so lucky to be able to have a platform like I do and you guys have honestly helped me more than you know. I am really committed to staying sober and I know that the first thing to do when you have those anxious feelings is to be able to talk about it. You know, it's one day at a time, but as you guys can see, some days can be harder than others. I know that my feelings are completely normal, so I'm trying not to, you know, feel shame or judge myself, but it's hard. I'm only human and like you guys, I have good days and I also have bad ones. For those of you though, who may struggle with any type of addiction, please reach out to a professional or if that makes you feel overwhelmed or full of anxiety, please share your story with your friends, family, or any space where you feel safe enough to be vulnerable. You know, a wise friend once told me, it's better out than in. Amen. Thank you all for being on this journey with me. Until next time, sending you all so much love and light.